and creating blah, 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 blah. Just make sure that they know that this is like a really basic prompt. Like they have to be super specific with their thing. Because I know right. like earlier people were like really messing things up. Right. Um, so it's like, yeah, clearly people don't have any clue. Right, yeah. Okay, we're on, right? Yes, we are on. Okay. You have to cover on your computer, right? Yes. So you emailed it to me already? Or? Yeah, yeah, I have it. I have it. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. But did you email it to me or not yet? Uh, just right now, okay. Okay, now your screen is being displayed, so you may wonder. That's not here, it's not a really long brain. <laughs> not that I have any. Oh, okay. All the sweetie messages from your spouse. All right. And Mm -hmm. yeah but you know luckily at the end of the other session yes we're, we're i'm waiting for one quick email just to and then so just give us some a, a minute so if hi everybody good morning so if everybody everyone could take a seat and if you haven't had a chance grab an evaluation at from the front um, if you were in the last session, make sure you put your evaluation um, away. Um, give it to Dr. Brian McGowan, please. Appreciate it from the last session and also get your current evaluation for this session. And just give us about 45 more seconds approximately to get started. Thank you. And while we're waiting, it's just the technical thing. Um, if you could make sure that you have your laptop open or your tablet or whichever device you want to use today. And, and, and. Done. Yep. Okay. All right. So yes, I'm good. Yes. Oh, share screen. All right, so good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us um, today. Um, this is going to be a workshop, so we're going to talk a little bit, but we will ask you to follow our lead and try things out on um, either ChatGPT or Microsoft Copilot. Um, and just follow our lead and share what you um, what you're able to do or share your concerns. Um, if you even if you're in this room, I recommend that if you could please if you could please um, join Zoom for one purpose and the only purpose is so you can have access to these slides. The slides include a lot of links that you can click on. Um, I was thinking about how else to share it, but I think that's um, that's the one way to go to make it uh, quick. And if you are on Zoom, if you look in chat, you should already see um, the link to the presentations. And it's because it's sort of an interactive presentation 
Uh, it's a workshop, so there will be links that I will ask you to click on. So today I am joined by um, Susan George, who is my colleague in OGIS, the Office of Global and Immersive Studies. We are teaching in the ELTA program and we also teach complex problems. And we also are joined by our guest, um, Arif Zahid. And I just recently become aware of um, all the unbelievable things that he does with AI. So I can't wait to um, to let him talk and show you what else you can do. Um, all right, so let's dive into the workshop. So we're focusing on uh, talking a little bit about Copilot, the new tool, um, and how we can use Copilot and Chat GPT in the classroom. And it's and today's session is going to be about us. We're not going to talk about students. They can do whatever they want. We're talking about us and how we can be more efficient and um, more creative with the help of AI. So we will talk about prompts and prompt design, and that's exactly what we we will ask you to um, to try out. And, and then finally, um, you will learn about how you can also create, or you can ask someone to create a virtual assistant for you. Um, okay, so AI, uh, I mean, uh, Microsoft just released its generative AI co-pilot in November, and uh, they are really hoping that it's going to be something big. Uh, they are actually talking about, you know, what to value their shares because they know that it's going to be huge in education because higher ed typically uses Microsoft. And so that means that all the students and the instructors and staff have access to Microsoft 365 and within that, the app called uh, Microsoft um, Copilot. Um, if you type in Microsoft Copilot in the search if you're using Google or any other search engines, you will have, you will end up with quite a few choices. Um, I highly recommend checking out the future potentials of um, Microsoft Copilot. Basically, um, if you're going to use Outlook in the future, you can simply ask, um, once it's integrated in Outlook, you can just say, uh, pull up all my emails with my colleague, Susan, um, about using AI in our classrooms, all my conversations from November and December, and is going to pull it up and give you a, a nice bullet pointed list of what you uh, conversed about the topic. Um, if you're using PowerPoint, it's going to boost your PowerPoint if you're preparing uh, your lectures via PowerPoint. Um, if you're using uh, Microsoft Teams for your meetings, if you have to leave early or, or if you are late to a meeting, it's going to help you catch up with what you missed or what, uh, what you missed from the meeting. So the potentials are great right now. Unfortunately, this is not integrated in 365. I really hope that at some point um, in the near future, it will be. If you click on or if you type in copilot.microsoft.com, that's where you can actually access Copilot. If you um, if you click on adoption.microsoft.com, Copilot, that's where you can access the resources. So there are two different ways to go. Let me just focus on the resources very quickly. So um, adoption, again, adoption.microsoft, that's where the resources are. There is um, there's a video about, again, what the tool can do. So you can um, take a look at that. You can browse through the page and you will find information about um, how it has been used in education in Wichita, Kansas, I guess K through 12 tried it out and they had a huge success there. So you can read about that, the case study. Um, also, there's information about the importance of AI literacy or teaching AI literacy. Um, and so finally, if you scroll down on the page, there's information, there's a tab called Copilot in Education. And so all the details, all the information is there that I highly recommend for you to browse through and read. Um, on this link right here, 
So learnmicrosoft.com. Um, you can find resources, the teacher's guide, the classroom toolkit. What I recommend here is paying attention to the classroom agreement. If you don't have a classroom agreement about AI use or the use of AI tools for uh, this semester, I highly recommend to copy and, and paste it into your syllabus and talk about it on day one with the students. Um, and also there's a link to elements of a good prompt and we're going to talk about that soon. But right now I just wanted to, oops, I wanted to uh, very quickly, um, sorry, I clicked on the wrong link, quickly show you what that looks like. So classroom agreement, it's right here. Yes. Yes, you can click on the long links. Um, so what I did, I yes, yeah, so if you're in Zoom and if you're in chat, oh, you can see what I'm showing you. So if you look on in, in the chat, there's a link to my presentation and all the links are in the presentation. Oh, who joined late? They couldn't. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'll do that. Oh, okay. So, All folks, right. if you have questions, I need to give you the mic so that people on Zoom can actually hear you speak. <laughs> <laughs> I may have that PhD, but hold up. I don't know about that summary part. <laughs> okay, so let me do this very quickly. So, there we go. Let me know if you can see it now. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. So I'm going to slow down just a little bit because now <laughs> I realize that it was probably a little bit of a catching up right there. And so if you're looking at the slides, I am on slide seven. So slide seven is the one with the classroom agreement. And so you're you're going to click on this link up here. And that link is going to take you to the agreement. And you can just zoom in. If you think that this agreement is way too general and doesn't cover exactly what you want students to use or not use, feel free to rewrite it. I'm sure that Microsoft just, you know, handed it out to everyone um, for them to modify and make sure that it fits their um, their classes, their courses. Um, you can use AI to modify it, and you can just say, I want to use it in my American history class. It's freshman students, and it's, you know, they have whatever level of, of understanding of AI. So it's um, it can be just like that. Um, whoever is moderating the chat box, uh, can I ask you to periodically just copy and paste the link yeah, so, just in case somebody arrives late? So Rita says that the links on the resources page don't seem to work. Yeah, so when you look at resources, this is an image, and then the link is up here. So this is the this is the link right here. And the link, you said that the links on the resources page. So once you pull up resources, they are right here. And uh, one um, offer that I have is because I'm the AI in instruction um, faculty fellow here with CTRL. If you want to sit down with me in a one-on-one -on -one or a small group session on trying things out in the spring, please let me know, send me an email. That's what I'm here for. Now- What's your email? Uh, it's going to be on the slide, <laughs> the last slide, and I'm going to share it in the chat as well. Um, so, 
co-pilot sign in before. I mean, this is something that you can also do with the students just to to have the initial conversation with them. And uh, I highly recommend to click on terms and privacy with the students so that they understand um, what the conditions are. Um, of course, terms and privacy, you know, written in, both written in legal terms. So you can ask AI to, you know, make it more accessible to those who might not understand that language. As you sign in to Microsoft Copilot, this is what you should see. And as you can see, um, it's already telling you, you know, ask me anything. And do you want me to create, write, analyze, templatize, summarize? So there are all these different options. And I definitely want to slow down here. And and uh, uh, let me just.
connections. And then I also have the, um, oh yeah, thank you, thank you. <laughs> it works. Uh, and I also have the the grading rubric. So if I if I'm happy with the whole thing, except the learning uh, outcomes, then I can just tell, have the dialogue with AI and say, okay, listen, it's all good, but let's just talk about that first bit. And number four is almost everything is good, but now maybe I just have to adjust it to Canvas or adjust it to um, you know my style, teaching style. So that's the manual editing part. And it doesn't came from me. So I actually saw the work of this professor on LinkedIn. His name is Lance Cummings. And he's the one who created this um, whole flow chart of, uh, um, um, of prompting that, you know, it's not just put the prompt in and then you're good. It's, you know, going through different steps. Sometimes you don't have to, if you're really good and if it's something short, then maybe that step one will do and you're good to go. But sometimes it has to be um, all those um, steps. Um, let me just show you what this might look like with Chat GPT. So I had, I went through the process with um, Chat GPT just recently. I started with this prompt right here. Uh, I said I teach first year freshmen, college students, and they need to use Flip to create blogs. So I, I you know, I, I told AI the whole story of what I want. I want to use Flip where I want student, my students to use Flip to create a video blog. And I want the, those learning objectives. I want the directions and a grading rubric. And so Chad GPT, you know, within three seconds, was like, okay, here. And... Um, and so I thought, okay, you know, good, good. I like it. But, you know, I I forgot to say that it's 10 points, not 40 or 60 or 100 or whatever. So I said, okay, um, <clears throat> round two. So this is the tweaking. And I said, okay, it's going to be just 10 points. And so I, I started making those um, tweaks that I forgot about earlier. So I said it should be a single point grading rubric, maximum 10 points. And so, uh, and I added a couple more suggestions as well. And Chad GPT went, oh, okay, here. So now it's okay. I like it better. Yes, sure. Thank you. And um, and the next thing was, okay, almost like everything. I just don't like had the beginning with the learning objective. It says students and there, I want to say you. I want to tell students, you know, you need to do this and you're doing it. And I just said, okay, edit the learning objectives and replace there with your, and so it did. And now I thought, okay, you know, this, this looks good. Um, so what I did next, I, of course, ended up with the manual editing. I wanted to organize it in a more user-friendly way for my students, what they are used to. And so this, you know, this is what they mean by manual, manual editing when you add your, you know, fairy dust to, um, to the process right there. I did the same with Copilot. Now with Copilot, so with Chat GPT, the, the, gr the great thing is that you can always save the chats and then you can just build up the whole chat. With Copilot, it's going to allow you to save things um, as a PPT, as an Excel, um, or in a Word document. So that's what I did. And um, so I did the same process with Copilot. I gave it a prompt, then it gave me the output. Then I re tweaked the prompt, added some more information to be more specific. Then it gave me the other output. Then I asked it to replace students with you, just like with ChatGPT, and it did. So, and then of course I did the manual editing. So I created the, the rubric to, so that it fit my style so that the students would know. So essentially what we'd like to do, and I'm going to hand it over to Susan in a minute, we would like to, you to practice designing rubrics and lesson objectives and instructions with us today. And also, if we have time, okay, how do we even um, use AI to provide individual feedback? Um, and also, how to create a virtual assistant. Um, what I would like you to, um, 
to do if you feel comfortable with it. So on this slide, slide 16, there is a link to Jamboard. So if you click on it, you should see this. And um, and if you have, if you actually end up with some really good prompts and really good outputs, feel, please come here and share. Okay, so share so we can all see um, what you ended up with. So that's that's my recommendation here. So there you go. Let's start with uh, task number one. Okay, I'm going to just go through some really simple tasks. So first, let's look at lesson objectives. Uh, so your task today is you can modify a current le lesson objective that you have and um, ask the AI to make it more robust or and and or provide key sentences or phrases from syllabi, um, an assignment that you may have and to see whether Copilot or ChatGPT can create something for you. Of course, for the purposes of this exercise, you can just write up a prompt yourself. I don't expect you to dig through your syllabus at this point. So um, I created a very simple lesson objective, and this does not address the, um, the different sets of uh, criteria that a good prompt should. So for instance, it doesn't have a clear persona, like it doesn't have all the, um, it doesn't provide all the elements of a good prompt. On the other hand, as a starting point, it works. Using Bloom's taxonomy, write a seven point lesson objective for a class in 19th century peace negotiations. Obviously, you, this class presumably would be a higher level class. It wouldn't be an elementary school class. And AI is aware that you know, you're know you asking, is aware of the level to some extent, all right? So the example is very simplistic. The prompt is very simplistic. And so are some of the, um, some of the examples that follow. But you can see how um, something very simple like adding use Bloom's taxonomy allows uh, AI to provide fairly robust um, lesson objectives, even without tweaking. Now, of course, the interests of the class, what you're teaching, the focus, which, sent, which part of the century exactly, which, um, uh, you know, which issues you are going to focus on in the class, AI does not know that, unless you've also provided key words or elements from the syllabus. So this is what um, was provided by Copilot. This is unedited, okay? I then asked Copilot to shorten the objectives. And this is the shortened version that was provided to me. Now, what I would, um, so, the focus may be, the one thing that you have to be aware of is that if you provide um, parts of your syllabus, for instance, ChatGPT or Copilot will look at the syllabus and look at the elements, but may not be able to distinguish which aspects of your syllabus need to have more focus paid to it. So it may integrate things like formatting and mechanics and provide give them as much weight as um, content information, which obviously you then need to weed out in either dialogue with AI or manually editing. Okay, so if um, so, we were hoping that you would like to try it out, create a set of lesson objectives for one class that you may be teaching um, and see what AI can come up with. Uh, provide a prompt. You can either provide a simple prompt or you can go back to the slide here and provide a prompt that um, provides your persona. I am a professor of and the subject, and I would like to create a, and for my students uh, in my whatever class, the students need to know whatever, and then, um, set a boundary or some limitation. It is a 90 minute class. It's a 
and see what AI comes up with for you. All right, five, shall we say five minutes or so? And um, then when you have a creation, please go to the Jamboard file and put that, put that on there so we can see what, um, which le what lesson plans um, AI has come up with. Jamboard. Where is the Jamboard? May I ask a, ask a quick question? Usually, how do you acknowledge the use of ChatGPT, for example, in your syllabus? Uh, or how? What do you add a sentence at the end, at the beginning, or how is it usually acknowledged the fact that you use ChatGPT or any other uh, GPT for help? You mean as instructors, whether we use chat GPT? I think at this point, you yeah. use... Uh, it... Yeah, and you, I, I will give a syllabus to the students and I want to say, yeah, chat GPT helped me to make this syllabus. Do so, you... um, let me just... So my students in the syllabus find uh, a writing code of conduct. So there's... Oh, if I use ChatGPT in my syllabus. So um, I haven't updated my syllabus. I'm working on it this weekend. Um, but <laughs> very last minute. Um, but yeah, so if I, um, I don't think I used that in in the syllabus, but I think if you just create an assignment with the help of, uh, help of ChatGPT, I think at the bottom, it would be nice to say that this lesson, um, uh, this assignment was partially generated by ChatGPT because then it's, you know, it would be a nice um, sign that the students can see that you're acknowledging. So then, you know, they get into the habit. But yeah, so that's that's one way to do it. Mm -hmm. Or you can say it in the syllabus that assignments wh where you have the list of assignments, you can just say some of the assignments will be, you know, or were partially generated by, uh, or not generated by, but, you know, generated with the help of AI. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Question. Yes. So do we think that this could possibly, the whole use of AI, is this, crossing into a territory where we're becoming maybe less academic, less, I don't want to say proficient, but um, kind of using our own tools and skill sets to put these things together? Are we, you think maybe will become too reliant on it for everything? Or um, you think that's okay? Because I'm thinking as a writer, that makes me a little uncomfortable knowing that people can just kind of put something in and it generates these wonderful sentences. And here I am struggling over a paragraph for three weeks, you know, absolutely. I don't know. It's, it's a little uncomfortable. I think that this is, this is the same argument that, you know, people have had with the advent of the calculator and with the advent of the internet and so on. So I think that this is our new reality. I mean, and with the amount of information that exists now, we really can't parse all this information by ourselves. So we, this is a tool that people are going to be using. I think where um, you see the difference, and I, I mean, I see the difference as an instructor, is that I can tell when a student has used GPT to write something and when the student has put their um, creative creativity and their spirit into it, it's really, really obvious. There is a kind of flatness about um, GPT. And one assumes that, you know, there will be even more worth and value to that writing skill. Um, yes. I mean, I have a follow-up to the previous two comments because I'm more than a little uncomfortable. I am deeply uncomfortable. I mean, yes. I am hearing essentially advocacy of the use of AI in ways that at the previous session, 
we basically said students can't do it. And I don't understand what kind of message we're sending to our students. But can they just submit an assignment at the bottom of a little note? Oh, I used AI to help me write this. We just said they can't do that. Um, what kind of message are we sending if we as faculty do that? Or then do we hide it? And that's even worse. That would be an AIC violation if a student did it. Um, I mean, I do appreciate you all telling us the power of this, and we're learning mm -hmm. a lot about it. And it's a brave new world to me. And yes, I'm in the category of people who are still scared by it. But I've got to say, I'm deeply troubled that the idea that, that faculty are using this in a way that we wouldn't want our own students to do. We might be sending them to Alice and Thomas if they did. I'm sorry if I was trying. Oh, no, no, no. That's, uh, that's a deep. very valid question. Yeah, so I had a lot of discussions about this with Allison, and I don't think that she, I don't think that, and, and if we presented ourselves in the previous session that way, then I apologize. We didn't want to say that we're banning the tool with the students. It's just we're, we're telling them uh, where the boundaries are. So, for instance, if, say it again. I think the boundaries on the faculty should be, so let's say when we're talking about designing lesson objectives, right? So you have your own lesson objectives already. It's just um, revisiting the existing ones, right? So um, perhaps you think that, you know, I should use more um, verbs related to, you know, from Bloom's taxonomy. Uh, maybe I have uh, eight objectives, but I really want to reduce them into four or five. Um, you know, maybe I have, may maybe the sentences are um, a little bit too complex and I'm worried that some students don't quite understand what I'm trying to get across. So, you know, simplifying the language. So you're not um, plagiarizing, your, you know, you're using it to... Um, you know, to make your work more accessible to students. Or if you're thinking, you know, I've been using this assignment for uh, a few semesters, but I want to spice it up a little bit. I want to make changes. So, you know, you can do it without AI. So we're not saying, please, you must do it with it. No, 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 you can do it on your own. But if you think that you want to know what AI might suggest, then this is something that it should be, you know, that it should be fine. Just as I'm, you know, I would tell students if they are stuck with, you know, brainstorming to brainstorm with the help of AI. Some students feel a lot more comfortable um, talking to a chatbot than talking to um, either their classmates or their professors. So it's just, I would say this, you know, as options, as opposed to this is, you know, what you must do. So there's there's no enforcement in there. It's just, you know, there are different options. And and I understand the, you know, the resistance. Um, but I think that these are not boundaries that we're overstepping, or at least, you know, I I wouldn't view them that way. But we have AI chats throughout the semester, and this is something that would, you know, I would love to to further explore in those AI coffee chats. And of course, the, um, to follow up on that, it's like where where do you draw the line with creating lesson plans? Yes, but with uh, doing other academic work, no. So, but there needs to be. I mean, in some ways. Rules have to be established for us, just as they have to be established for students, I think, because at this point, it's just a brave new world. Everybody's out there figuring out how it can be used. And um, this is this is one way to utilize it. But that that ethical dimension has to be addressed, I think, institutionally, uh, perhaps. So um, I our five minutes, so we will continue. Similarly, with the assignment creation, we can look at um, creating assignments. All of us have so many assignments that we've created over the course of our time as instructors, okay? By using AI, we can uh, get new ideas, we can get assistance on certain things. For here, for instance, I, I'm a writing teacher, 
I am asking AI to provide a sample paragraph. So the assignment has been created by me. I already provided the um, assignment to the students, but students are saying, could you provide a sample paragraph for me? And I don't have a sample paragraph that kind of uses APA and text citations, does, the, um, does everything that I want to do. So I have kind of uh, broken down the structure of the paragraph so that they um, kind of know the things that they should be looking for. I want to avoid writing as formula, but sometimes very low level students need that formula. So uh, as a writing teacher, I have asked them to write a paragraph that includes a quotation or paraphrase, that includes an explanation or analysis, et cetera. So I, this is the sample that AI provided for me. It shows a topic sentence, it shows development, it shows the use of a quote, how to develop the quote, and so on. The fear, of course, is that students will then take what I have said and run the exact same thing through AI. I cannot. Um, there is at, at this level, you have to presume that students are learning through this process rather than just putting my assignment into AI and just having the, having the assignment done for you, which is very possible, which is very possible. But these, these uh, techniques exist for them, right? They can do it. There is nothing that prevents students from doing it. And it's very hard to know that they're doing it. Provide them the sample. Let them see what you kind of want. And let them then uh, work with that. And be, beyond that, because if you don't provide the sample, if you don't tweak it in any way, they are going to um, they are going to do it regardless. So this is my at least um, this is the rationale. So try it out. Do you have an assignment that you want a sample for? If you have an assignment that you would like to revise or an assignment sample that you want created. Um, you can enter it. I also know that there is some hesitation among faculty about putting their own assignments into AI for fear that AI will somehow be able to have that assignment. Assume that your assignments are being put into AI by your students, okay? So whether we put it in or not, somebody's putting it in. It's not, it's not us, all right? So it's a little bit scary, yes. Okay, so on Jamboard, on page two, on the second page, perhaps a sample of something that you want, um, your, an assignment that students could do. Yeah. Okay. And one quick thing about the assignments. Um, so, for example, if you, if you have an existing assignment, like a class discussion prompt, right, and you think, you know, I have 75 minutes, but I always feel like that we're running out of time or maybe I need a little bit of more, you know, structuring, then that's something that uh, AI can help. It can break it down to, if you want to say, um, I want to discuss with uh, this with my students, give me a time frame, and it can break it down. So it's just, you know, simple logistics that, you know, might take you quite a while to uh, to play out, but it can already sort of pre-calculate. Um, or, you know, sometimes if I um, put an assignment, a set of um, instructions in there and I think, okay, um, they think about everything and it's like, oh, allow students to, you know, reflect. I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot about the reflection part. Or, you know, so, something. So it's it's not going to completely revamp what you have. It's just, the you know, these minor adjustments, the tweaks that I appreciate when I reach out to, you know, AI to help me with, um, you know, redo assignments. Um, again, with the timing, with something that I overlooked, something that I didn't think about. Um, and that's the same with the rubric design. Did I think about everything, you know, how I wanted to assess this task? It can help 
bringing your attention to certain uh, items that you might have overlooked. And, you know, it has helped me, um, you know, staying focused and making sure that I, you know, that I checked all the boxes that I thought about everything. Okay, because just in the interest of time, I will um, race through the next part. And we wanted to uh, mention rubrics. Rubric creation is another task for which you can use AI. So you can, again, provide your persona, what is the task, um, and ask AI to create a rubric. The rubrics created on Copilot can be downloaded in Excel. And again, um, for a writing paper, you can ask, you can provide the categories and it will calculate the points for you and it will generate the rubric that you can then use. So um, if, for instance, you have a grading rubric and you want it to also acknowledge AI tool use and appropriate use of AI tools, AI integration, um, this is, these are elements that you can introduce into your own rubric. The um, question of how our AI use is acknowledged notwithstanding, okay? This is on the other end. Okay, so since we are, one slide that I have that is hidden right now, but I would, um, since you all have access to the, to the slides, Please look at this slide, and it's just a very interesting slide that um, how a GPT prompt can be written and uh, used for students. Okay. All right. All right. So thank you. Uh, I think I actually have to unclick this, but um, in the interest of time, we're going to... Um, skip a few ideas there, but you do have access to the slides. So please browse through and, and again, reach out to us if you want to have a follow-up meeting, consultation, join us for AI coffee chats, and we can explore some of these topics. My plan um, as the AI fellow to hold um, workshops about the creative uses of AI and also how to use or what to use certain AI tools for what purposes. And I'm very happy to introduce our guest speaker for today, Arav Zahid, who is in CAS teaching computer science. And um, he actually created his own virtual assistants. So I'm going to hand it over to him to explain what he's done. Yes, uh, hello everybody. Uh, the system I developed is called Sarah. And okay, so probably I will back here. All right. Okay, so I'm sure that everybody uh, has this uh, situation. You all had the situation that in the class suddenly someone asks something from you and you may not know the answer or you want more example of you, what, what you are explaining or you need more document or you need something to generate immediately in the classroom and then you can send it to your student or in some situation you have student from other countries with other languages like in, uh, for example german or French or Spanish, which they may not understand what you say, and you need to uh, basically translate that immediately in the class for a student for a short period of time. So what I did, actually, I used the power of uh, artificial intelligence, chat GPT, and Gemini, Google Gemini, to develop an uh, application that this application is actually the first a virtual teacher assistant in the class. And on the classroom, you can simply call it and you say, Sarah, do this for me. Or Sarah, explain this. Or Sarah, create this code in Python. Or Sarah, make this document ready for me on Microsoft PowerPoint. Or other thing. For example, show pictures of 
that sort of event. So this is basically uh, the application and uh, I developed. And uh, here is the capabilities of this system. Sarah can verbally communicate with you. So in the classroom, you simply call Sarah and it answers yes. And you can say whatever you need in uh, verbally to Sarah. For example, generate a code to demonstrate how, uh, um, how to generate a Fibonacci sequence uh, using Python language. So based on what you are saying, the, uh, Sarah can detect what you're saying and then tailor the content exactly based on your need. So it is not like you type something to the chat GPT and get the an answer in text. No, what you get is a complete formatted data based on your uh, inquiry. So for example, as I mentioned here, you can have the information projected on the screen about some sort of, uh, for example, uh, quantum physics in this case. Another thing that this system, Sarah, is able to control the environment. So that if you have audiovisual equipment and you have a signal uh, processing and switching system in, in your uh, classroom or anywhere, doesn't matter, even it's far, even in other country, and it's, you can connect this to this application, to the Sarah, and you can verbally communicate and say, do this for me, or turn off the projector, or I want my document to show from desktop, uh, for example, a document camera to the projector number two. So you can communicate verbally through the uh, smart class, which I also have uh, the developed that one, which I have a link here as a smart class system. You can later on go and uh, click on it and see what the smart class is. So Sarah is basically can communicate with this system and exactly like a, a teacher assistant help you in your class. I have a demonstration here and uh, I would like to show you this and you see Sarah in action in one of the classroom in uh, Don Mayer Technology Hall. Here it is. And if the sound, I'm not sure if the sound is. Share. Let me share your screen again. Using the... Okay. Go ahead. Okay. So let me share screen and then share sound. Oh, share sound. Quick. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. Sequence using recursion. Right. Let me sorry. Here it is. Let me make it full screen, which is not it's here, let's back here. All right, sorry. I was hoping to have a, all right. Sarah? Yes? Demonstrate how to solve a Fibonacci sequence using recursion in Python. So this is the 
editor, programming editor, uh -huh. and it's writing code for you inside the editor, so you can run it. Sarah? Yes? Mention all network protocol in a document file. So now if you'll see all the information you requested open on a document file Sarah. formatted and ready to use. Yes. What is iron deficiency in plants? So no, the answer is a verbal communication with you. Iron and deficiency answering. in plants is a condition where the plant is not receiving enough iron for healthy growth. It can lead to a decrease in chlorophyll production, yellowing of the leaves, stunted growth, and poor flowering. Iron is important for many processes in plants, including photosynthesis, respiration, and enzyme production. Great. Sarah? Yes? Would you show some picture of iron deficiency in plants? So now I specifically ask for picture only. Great. Which is the result on the screen. Thank you so much. So meanwhile, while you are uh, communicating with this system in your classroom, you can also ask Sarah to, to say what you need in other languages. For example, you say, I want you to explain this in French or in German or in Spanish. So all the process goes through that language at the same speed. So here is how the Sarah works. First, you have in step one, you have a speech recognition system that understands what you are talking verbally to the system and record your voice at the, uh, at the same time, analyzing it and sending the result to the uh, AI, whatever engine you are using. And then the content start tailoring based on the output you requested, just like what you saw. You want as a verbal answering, or you want to be on a different specific format, file document, or as a code, or image, or so on, or other languages. And finally, it prepared the content based on the language you requested, which is by default as English, and display it on the system through the uh, project or your project and in the classroom or uh, another, uh, basically, if you need a file to share or something that it prepared everything for you. So simply, it's happened for me, I'm sure maybe it's happened for you too, that you are in the classroom and suddenly someone asking a question that you cannot recall what the answer is, or you never came across that question before, and you can simply ask Sarah in the class to answer that question. While you are presenting, it, it shows the result on the screen and you know, you're know you getting some out of, uh, of the hook very fast. So you don't need to tell the student that, hey, I'm going to check it out and I will get back to you. All right. Meanwhile, based on the uh, process, you can, uh, you can control any hardware, either your computer, other computers, other audiovisual equipment, or even PLCs, if you are working on an environment that you need, for example, uh, some sort of uh, uh, wireless uh, microscope to check something, you can verbally tell the uh, Sarah to, for example, zoom in 100x on this part. And it sends the command through the serial communication port to the device to perform it. This a little bit uh, complicated stuff, but if you are interested, I can uh, explain it in more detail uh, later. So in order to bring all of these 
to the American University for our students. I started a club last year, a robotic and AI club. And this club, I am uh, basically uh, start teaching uh, the different techniques and uh, how to work with the AI and robotic system. Uh, this semester, uh, it starts at January 16, 11.45 to 12.45 in Don Mayer Technology Hall, room 111, which I reserve for every two weeks. And in this session, in one hour, uh, we made a very uh, dynamic and uh, fun environment for the student to start engaging on robotic and AI. And even it's my plan to show them how they can generate from scratch their own language model and how they can basically make something like ChatGPT under their own name, but from the scratch. So if you're interested, I, uh, I will be available on Don Mayer uh, uh, 108D is my office. And uh, mostly I am in the campus this semester, Thursday and Fridays uh, for two classes. And you can also check me out on the LinkedIn or shoot me an email. And I will be glad to answer any question or demonstrate Sarah for you and explain it in more detail. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. So if any question uh, for me, Sarah, or yes. What is the unique, what is unique about Sarah versus using chat GPT is chat GPT. You can use plugins, for example, one you can also have your own private and customized queries. Okay. So if they see the, uh, the demonstration I just did, chat GPT, only you can type something and get the result as a text. While the Sarah is processing the data receiving and also analyzing what I'm saying on the backbone with the program I developed and categorizing and tailoring it based on the instructor need in the class. So many professors here might have the same question, but have you marketed Sarah? Has AU um, decided to uh, I don't know how to say this, invest in Sarah? And can uh, other professors have little Sarahs or Rebecca's or John's or whatever they want to call their assistant? Um, because what you're doing is incredible. And I think that there could be a number of faculty who would love to have their own little assistants. So Sarah is still under development, uh, but uh, I'm I'm confident that we can use it in each classroom. And if they also use another invention that I have a smart class, which is on the slide, you can go and click the link to direct you to the YouTube about that. It can be integrated and it could be the first university ever using artificial intelligence as a virtual teaching while using a advanced audiovisual equipment system in the classroom. So I, I, I'm hoping that by next couple of months, we have a version of Sarah or any other name that you guys can customize there based on your you know, favorite and uh, have it if you wish to use it on the classroom. Uh, I'm completely open to that. Any other questions? Yes. Well, to use a technical term, I'm blown away. Um, uh, but I guess I should understand these things are coming. And if you're working on this, and I'm, I am truly impressed um, with Sarah, that was one of my many aunts. I had a grandmother, Rebecca. She could be one of That's the next great. ones. Uh, you know, I would guess that other people are out there doing this. And I would think that would include, for example, textbook publishers in many subjects like economics or math or various sciences and you know so how this is 
really a question that goes beyond your presentation, but maybe you have some insight. How soon are the publishers going to be coming to us? You know, they already give us PowerPoints and tests and all kinds of stuff we can use. I generally avoid it, but once mm -hmm. in a while, I confess I take advantage. Um, and uh, how soon are they going to be offering us, you know, Layla, who, you know, is your economics TA? Mm -hmm. And how soon are they going to be offering us, frankly, um, Professor Lee, who will replace us? Yes, actually, I was telling my friends that I am one a step close to being fired because this probably can take over, you know, and uh, do the job uh, for me. So uh, I believe that the situation from the educational perspective is changing rapidly from teacher point of view to a student teaching, uh, to a student learning uh, objective. So I believe that in between uh, five to seven years, uh, these methods that we are using, like the PDF books and everything, will, you know, uh, will go and uh, change with metaverse, uh, virtual reality, and artificial intelligence. So meanwhile, when this goes, we have to adapt ourselves for generating content for these new te emerging technologies like metaverse or like uh, virtual, different virtual reality. Yes, ma'am. Um, I think, and this is something that we were also discussing in another session, I think we don't have to lose sight of the fact that this is uh, generating content, but we still, um, as educators, well, I'm not a faculty, but I'm in many ways an educator as well, but uh, it's it's working on and with the student about how to be critical about all of this content. Uh, is this content accurate? Is it not? Is it, I mean, uh, it's not just the output, but also working with the student on how to be critical about that. And that's um, something we, we can't uh, leave out of the perspective as well. Yes. So basically, uh, it's a very good question because we know that artificial intelligence also can hallucinate and getting some false information. So this is something that the companies that working on this, trying to mitigate and trying to find out that the different technique to valid the output to see if the information is uh, valid or not. But uh, it is actually uh, happening and it is the wave that we have to go with it. Uh, artificial intelligence is here to stay. So can do anything. So that is the end of our session. I want to thank all of our panelists for today. If everyone could please fill out the evaluation and place it in the box in the front, or you can give it to me, one or the other. Um, and you will eventually get a Sarah and get a Sarah and get a Sarah and get a Sarah, I guess. Yes. Thank you all so much. <laughs> I would also like to thank you, uh, uh, Christina and uh, Susan, to invite me to this session which I can uh, show this uh, system to you. I really appreciate that. Thank you. And please, please join us in the spring for AI chats. Uh, we will have those every two, three weeks or so. I would like to invite uh, RF to at least a few just to um, you know, enlighten us about what we can do and you know, any concerns, any issues, so please keep that in mind. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah.